I want to start there, Senator, and thank you for being here. Uh, if the commission if the commission's members weren't able to get behind a proposal like this and, and make it the formal recommendations of, of the, the deficit commission, what chance does Congress have to do it? How much of a disappointment is today's vote? Well, I, look, I was, uh, along with Senator Gregg, really the architect of this notion of a commission. We set the bar really high, 14 of 18. We got 11 of 18, which is more than 60 percent. Typically, 60 percent, even up against a filibuster, prevails. <laughs> so. Uh, I think in measured in that way, it's a remarkable success that 60% of this commission could agree on really tough medicine, $4 trillion of debt reduction. So, you know, what Senator Gregg and I proposed was somewhat different. We said the president needed to be represented at the table by the Secretary of the Treasury and the head of the Office of Management and Budget. I think really that's where it needs to go next. We need to have a summit that involves the White House, the leadership of the House and the Senate, Democrats and Republicans. Uh, Senator, I want to talk to you about that for a second. Uh, Senator Durbin came out of this process saying this shows that, that we need to proceed and begin the, the debate. But when it comes to a summit, should we really be looking to the White House to be leading the charge on this? What do you expect from President Obama and the White House on this issue of the deficit? Uh, I expect their participation. Uh, that's what Senator Gregg and I proposed. That's what was left out of the executive order. Uh, that's what needs to happen next. I, I don't think there's any member of this commission that didn't realize at the end of the process something significant has to be done. We are on an utterly unsustainable course. We're borrowing 40 cents of every dollar we spend. We're headed for a circumstance in which the debt will be 400 percent of the gross domestic product of the country. And nobody believes that that uh, is possible to allow to happen. So it's time now to come up with a plan that involves the president and Republicans and Democrats, House and the Senate. Senator, there's going to be a vote in the Senate tomorrow on an extension of the of the Bush tax cuts. It's only for those making uh, couples making less than two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. The House voted on this yesterday and passed it uh, mostly with Democratic support. How do you intend to vote tomorrow on this? Oh, I strongly support that. Uh, we absolutely must extend the middle class tax cuts. Uh, as you perhaps know, I've said I would be willing to uh, extend all of the tax cuts for a relatively short period of time if we, at the end of the period, had fundamental tax reform, which is what the commission called for, uh, eliminating some of the deductions, credits, exclusions, or at least dramatically limiting them so that we can lower overall rates, make the system more progressive and more fair and more effective. So, but originally you had suggested, as you said, extending all of the tax cuts. Are you going to be okay with just a bill that comes out that extends it only for those in that category, in that tax bracket? Well, it is the thing that absolutely must be done is to extend the tax cuts for the middle class. The economic consequences of failing to extend the tax cuts for at least the middle class would be very severe. It uh, would cost us about one-third of the economic growth that's anticipated for next year, according to the Congressional Budget Office and other analysts. Uh, so, look, it's imperative that we extend the tax cuts for the middle class. And uh, I would go further in exchange for fundamental tax reform at the end of the time. Senator, I want to ask you about some of the tough choices that have to happen whenever you, you tackle the deficit, because we hear so much talk. Everyone says we have to do something about the deficit. When it comes down to individual programs, it gets so difficult. I mean, just this, just this week, you signed a letter uh, calling for an extension of ethanol subsidies. Environmental groups very critical of that. It uh, would be something that, that, that again, would, would have a cost to the U.S. Treasury. How do you square those positions? How, how do you force Congress and me members like yourself to say, look, we have to accept them some things we're not going to like here? <laughs> hey. I just voted this morning for four trillion dollars of debt reduction, one and a half trillion dollars of spending cuts, including ten billion dollars out of agriculture when my state's the most agricultural state in the nation. So please, <laughs> I mean, I've I've just bellied up to the bar. But ethanol well, is a larger. Let me let me answer your question. Sure. Ethanol is a larger question of energy security for this country. We have got to reduce our dependence on foreign energy. We're, we're importing 
60 percent of the oil that we use. We are spending four to five hundred billion dollars a year buying foreign energy. There is a huge part of our economic problem is the money we are sending overseas to pay for energy we could produce here at home. All right, Senator Kent Conrad, Democrat of North Dakota, who bellied up to the bar today, took that vote on the Deficit Commission. We appreciate you being with us. Thank you so much, sir. You bet.